Let's take a look at the world's most advanced fighter, the F-22 Raptor. Widely considered the best air superiority fighter in the world, the Lockheed Martin F-22 is a fifth generation, twin engine, single seat, all weather stealth tactical fighter aircraft. Developed from decades of air combat experience, the F-22 excels in its one true mission to defeat any air adversary it encounters. This is accomplished by the Raptor's incredible performance, advanced avionics, and stealth profile. Notable features of the Raptor include twin tails, a trapezoidal wing, and a golden canopy which is coated with a thin layer of indium tin oxide or ITO. This acts as an EM shield to maintain stealth characteristics. Having been deployed since 2005, Let's take a look at some of the specifications for the F-22 Raptor. Length, 62 feet, 1 inch. Height, 16 feet, 8 inches. Wingspan, 44 feet, 6 inches. Maximum speed, estimated at Mach 2.25. Supercruise, Mach 1.82 or 1,220 miles per hour at altitude. Empty weight, 43,340 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 83,500 pounds. Combat range, 530 miles with 115 miles in supercruise. Engines, each Pratt & Whitney F119 PW100 thrust vectoring augmented turbofan. 26,000 pounds of thrust dry or 35,000 pounds with afterburner. Thrust to weight ratio, 1.25 with loaded weight and 50% internal fuel. The F-22 is armed with an internal 20mm M61A2 Vulcan rotary cannon and typically carries 480 rounds of ammunition. The M61 is capable of firing 6,000 rounds per minute or 100 rounds per second. Additionally, the F-22 has three internal weapons bays, one large central bay and two side bays. Along with this, there are four external hardpoints. To maintain its stealth characteristics, the F-22 can keep ordnance inside of its weapons bays, briefly opening them to deploy munitions. Some of the possible weapon loadouts can include, for air-to-air -air missions, six AIM-120 AMRAMs and two Sidewinders. For air-to-ground missions, two 1,000-pound JDAMs, two AIM-120s, and two Sidewinders, or eight 250-pound GBU-39 precision-guided bombs, two AIM-120s, and two Sidewinders. It seems like the Raptor never leaves home without some air-to-air -air missiles. The four external hardpoints can be used to carry 600-gallon drop tanks or 5,000 pounds of ordnance per pylon. Aside from its incredible performance and weapons options, part of what makes the F-22 so deadly is its advanced avionics. While some of the details are still classified today, here's what we know about the F-22's sensor platforms. The F-22's radar is the AN-APG-77, which is an actively electronically scanned array or AESA radar. AESA radars are superior to mechanically actuated radars since they can change scan direction in mere nanoseconds where mechanical radars have to physically move the dish to scan different parts of the sky. Officially, the radar has an operational range of 100 miles, but some speculate that this could be as high as 150 miles with an estimated 250 mile range for a narrow beam search. Defensively, the F-22 uses the AN-AAR-56 Advanced Missile Launch Detector, which warns the pilot of a missile launch so that evasive maneuvers and countermeasures can be deployed. Additionally, the F-22 also has an AN-ALR-94 radar warning receiver, which warns a pilot of radar emissions or tracking and is said to have a range of over 250 miles. Along with warning systems, the F-22 also carries flare and chaff dispensers to be used as countermeasures. And finally, along with the integrated communication, navigation, and information, or CNI systems, the F-22 makes extensive use of data link systems, which allow it to receive and send information, thereby providing it a complete picture of the battlefield. 
In many ways, the F-22 can be thought of as an evolution of the incredibly successful F-15 Eagle. In 1981, when the F-15 was still relatively new, the Air Force put forth a requirement for an aircraft to eventually replace both the F-15 and F-16. This was driven by the advancements in Soviet air defenses along with increasing numbers of MiG-29s and Su-27 fighters. In what became known as the Advanced Tactical Fighter or ATF program, requirements included the use of advanced materials including composites, high performance with supercruise, and stealth technology. By 1986, the competition had been narrowed down to two competitors, Lockheed and Northrop. To build such an advanced airplane, Northrop teamed up with McDonnell Douglas, while Lockheed teamed up with Boeing and General Dynamics. This resulted in two designs, Lockheed's YF-22 and Northrop's YF-23. Along with these two designs, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney each developed an engine which would be used in both fighters, the engines being designated the YF-120 and the YF-119, respectively. And while the two designs both met the competition's requirements of survivability, supercruise, stealth, and ease of maintenance, they each had very different design philosophies. Seen as more conventional, it's not hard to view the YF-22 as an evolution of the F-15, with both utilizing twin vertical tails and horizontal stabilizers. Having been a partner of Lockheed in the F-22 development program, General Dynamics likely applied much of the data they obtained from their F-16XL program into the F-22. If you haven't already, check out my video all about the F-16XL. Meanwhile, the YF-23 was a more cutting-edge design with a rhombus-shaped wing and an all-moving V-tail. Performance-wise, the YF-23 design was faster and more stealthy while the YF-22 was slightly more maneuverable at low speeds due to its thrust vectoring. The YF-22 was also generally seen as less of a risk when it came to manufacturing costs, and in 1991, the YF-22 with a Pratt & Whitney engine combination were chosen as the winner of the ATF competition. Why did the YF-22 beat the YF-23? In a debate that still goes on today, many have felt that the YF-23 was the better airplane and should have won the competition. Essentially, you could say it came down to public relations. The Lockheed team conducted a demonstration flight of a high angle of attack maneuver, while the Northrop team decided not to do so. And even though the YF-23 could perform the same maneuver, by not demonstrating it, the implication was that the YF-22 could perform the maneuver while the YF-23 could not. Additionally, although not a requirement of the test program, the Lockheed team also conducted live fire exercises of an AIM-9 Sidewinder and an AIM-120 AMRAAM missile from the internal weapons bays. This was seen as going above and beyond what was necessary for testing and made a favorable impression among the evaluators. Some have called the YF-23 design ahead of its time. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a dedicated video on the Black Widow and the Grey Ghost. Getting back to the F-22's development. The Navy briefly looked at obtaining F-22s as part of the Navy Advanced Tactical Fighter or NATF program. A swing wing F-22 was envisioned, but it was found that the added weight and potential loss of stealth characteristics introduced by the swing wing was not acceptable. The NATF program was cancelled in 1991. Can you imagine Sea Raptors operating off of carriers? The ATF program was initially planned for a run of 750 advanced tactical fighters. However, in 1996, this number was reduced to 648 aircraft. During the 1997 budget cuts, this number was further reduced to 339. And by 2003, the number was reduced further to 277. And while the Air Force advocated that 381 aircraft was the minimum number necessary to meet its need, in 2004, this number was reduced again to 183 aircraft to be assigned to seven combat squadrons. It's hard to imagine now, but in the early 2000s, the F-22 was seen as an unneeded luxury. With unconventional low-intensity wars going on in both Iraq and Afghanistan, the need for a super-advanced air superiority fighter was extensively debated. This, along with funds being diverted to both the F-35 and F-18 production lines, led to the final decision to only produce 187 total aircraft. At its peak, the F-22 production line was producing two new airplanes a month while employing 95,000 people in 46 states. More recently, with both Chinese and Russian designs closing the gap on the F-22, 
In 2016, studies were being conducted to resume production of the F-22. It was then estimated that to produce an additional 194 F-22s would cost a total of $50 billion or about $215 million per aircraft. Unfortunately, the Air Force decided not to move forward with this plan. And in 2011, the last Raptor rolled off the assembly line in Lockheed's Georgia factory. The F-22 is operated exclusively by the United States, and while countries such as Australia, Japan, and Israel express interest in obtaining F-22s, U.S. federal law prohibits exports of the F-22, as it contains many still classified technologies. Instead, the F-35 was developed with similar technologies as the F-22 and designed to be more affordable and available for export. Introduced operationally in 2005, by 2007 the F-22 had achieved full operational capacity or FOC with the 1st Fighter Wing and the 192nd Virginia Air National Guard Unit, being the first fully integrated F-22 squadrons. During readiness trials in 2008 in simulated air combat, the unit earned a kill ratio of 221 to 0. Additionally, F-22s have somewhat routinely intercepted Russian bombers, including Tu-160s and Tu-95s, with the first such incident occurring in 2007 near Alaska. Starting in 2009, F-22s have been deploying to Al Jarafa Air Base in the UAE, which lies less than 200 miles from Iran. In fact, in 2013, an F-22 had intercepted an Iranian F-4 that had gotten a little too close to a Predator drone, which was flying near the Iranian coastline. And although initially not designed as an air-to-ground attacker, in 2014, as part of the opening strikes during Operation Inherit Resolve, F-22s dropped 1,000-pound laser-guided bombs on ISIS targets in Syria. By 2015, F-22s had dropped over 250 bombs in support of the effort, and also played a key role in deterring Russian, Iranian, and Syrian aircraft from intervening against Kurdish troops. These operations highlighted one of the lesser known or talked about features of the F-22, reconnaissance and surveillance, something that the F-22 performs very well given its stealthy profile. Today, some of the current units operating the F-22 include the 27th Fighter Squadron, the 43rd Fighter Squadron, which is a training unit, the 90th Fighter Squadron, the 94th Fighter Squadron, the 199th Fighter Squadron, which is an Air National Guard unit. The 411th Fighter Test Squadron. The 422nd Test and Evaluation Squadron. The 433rd Weapon Squadron. And the 525th Fighter Squadron. The Air Force plans to operate the F-22s well into the 2050s. And while the F-22 is still widely considered the best air superiority fighter in the world, there are signs of the gap closing with near-peer rivals like China and Russia. This, along with the production line of F-22s being prematurely cut short, will likely serve to hasten the development of a sixth-generation aircraft, one which the F-22 could serve alongside with. In fact, the Air Force has started working on plans to develop and deploy a sixth-generation aircraft in a program which is known as the Next Generation Air Dominance, or NGAD. Obviously very highly classified, the NGAD program's goal is to develop a sixth generation fighter and produce it in sufficient numbers to maintain air superiority in the near future. What do you think? Should more F-22s have been built? How long will the F-22's dominance last? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Stay safe and see you next time.